Hey all, welcome back to SLB Basement Bourbon Bar. My name is Kurt. Today we're going to move on in our series of how to start a home bar in part two. Today we're going to be doing spirits. What spirits do you absolutely have to have to start a home bar? And this was difficult for me. There's so many things I like to give you that you need to start a home bar, but I broke it down to actually six. Six particular bottles, six different variation of spirits that are actually truly necessary to start a home bar, but I'm gonna give you a lot of other options besides that. So let's get started. We got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get into it. One real quick note though. What we did here, Trent and I did, we really tried to choose bottles that are within the 20 to $30 range so that uh, budget-wise it could be fairly efficient. If in fact you have other spirits that you prefer than what I'm offering to you, Always go with what you like the most. Let's get into it. Very first spirit that I feel that you need in your home bar is rye whiskey. You gotta have it. I personally am in love right now with this Old Forester rye. This thing goes extremely well in any cocktail and is also a fantastic sipper. Rittenhouse is another great option, but me personally, love this. Old Forester Rye. The very next category we want to discuss is bourbon. It's an essential bottle that you have to have. So this is the second essential bottle we're going to discuss. My particular bottle that I just love to have as far as bourbon is concerned in my bar is Old Granddad 114. It makes an absolutely fantastic cocktail and is a wonderful sipper. However, some of you may feel that this particular bottle is a little high on proof. So I'm also going to include this Old Forester 100 just for reference sake. As you can see, we use it very extensively here in the bar and it's a great $20 bourbon to have also as an essential part of the bar. Moving on down the line, still in the whiskey category, this isn't an essential. This is not an essential bottle, but I want to, I want to bring it out to you. Scotch. Eventually you're going to want to add a scotch bottle in my opinion. This monkey shoulder is absolutely dynamite. It is a single malt blend. It's an excellent sipper and it was actually uh, it was actually made for cocktails. $30 bottle. Once you get to the point where your budget allows, your space allows, you want to add a scotch bottle, I highly recommend monkey shoulder. Next in line, the next essential bottle. So this is essential bottle number three. You have to have some form of gin in your home bar. Me personally, if I'm only gonna pick one bottle, it's gonna be Beef Eater. This will go in just about anything. I love it in all of my martinis. Love it, love it. It's a little bit juniper forward though. So when you wanna expand your gin collection, I would add something like this Plymouth gin. This Plymouth gin is going to be a little bit better of a gin when you're mixing uh, some form of a citrus type cocktail or something like that, but you at least have to have one bottle of gin in your home bar. Next in line, rum. This is a little bit difficult for me because I'm not, I'm not a big rum professional by any stretch of the imagination, so I'd love to get your comments on this particular part of the, of the uh, discussion here as far as your home bar is concerned and essential bottles. This is essential bottle number four. You need to have a white rum. Me personally, I really love this Floridicana Extra Dry. It says Extra Seco. That means Extra Dry. I love this bottle. It works wonderful on daiquiris, daiquiri vari variations. I mix a lot of that kind of stuff and I really, really like it. Plantation Three Star, another good one. But you have to have a clear rum. Following that, once you want to expand and get to that point, you want to add a dark rum. I've got a plantation dark here. This is where I really suffer in this category. Can I really use your tips on this one? Uh, I have an El Dorado 12 year up there, but that's a little pricey of a bottle. Love to get your comments right now. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy with this uh, plantation dark. So once you get to that point, you want to add a dark rum as well. Moving on down the line, we've got bottle number five. Trent, am I counting correctly? Am I right? Bottle number five. You got to have a tequila. You got to have a tequila in your home bar. Now, I personally only have this Herradura bottle 
here in my bar. This is a little bit more expensive than that $20, $30 category. Trenton at his home bar has Exotico. Is that right, Trenton? Exotico. It's about $20. Get a silver tequila, whatever you do, whatever you choose, whatever bottle you choose, make sure it's 100% agave. It's going to make a world of difference in your cocktails. Trenton's bottle at home, the Exotico, is also 100% agave for 20 bucks. So once you get to this point, if you want to expand from there, you can get into the Reposados, the Anejos. All that is is extra barrel aging. There's no barrel aging in this silver tequila here. The Reposado and the Anejo has a period of time that it rests and aged in barrels and adds a bigger depth of flavor. Last but not least, our sixth bottle that I feel, six spirit, that you need absolutely have to have in order to start your own bar, vodka. My preference is this Kettle One. Usually when I when I mix any form of a, uh, of a vodka cocktail, I usually always reach for this Kettle One. It seems to be a, a pretty good quality vodka. We always have Tito's down here too. It seems like the younger crowd likes Tito's when I'm mixing mules, maybe things like that, that have other components in the in the cocktail, and juices and things like that. A lot of times that might go with uh, with this Tito's. This is another subject though that I probably could use some help in because me personally, I'm not a huge, I'm not I'm just not a huge vodka fan. We have a, we have one of our followers, one of our subscribers, Pavel. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. If you're listening, he's from Poland. And he has some sweet gems as far as vodka is concerned. If you're listening, buddy, list off some of your suggestions for the people here for vodka. Much appreciated. That pretty much covers all of our six essential bottles. Trenton, help me if I get this wrong. But we have rye whiskey, bourbon, all right? We have gin. We have tequila. We have vodka, and I missed one somewhere. Which one did I miss? Rum. Rum. Yeah, of course, because I said I'm not that good at rum. So we have six. Six essential spirits that you need. And I gave you some other options, too, once you wanted to grow. I got a few things more to show you, and then we'll be done. If you ever want to add a cognac, brandy or a cognac, I highly suggest this Mason Rouge cognac. This is beautiful stuff. VSOP, and it's $30. If you ever want to add... A cognac. This is a dandy for $30. Moving on down the line, we got vermouth. You're gonna need some, you're gonna need some vermouth in order to mix some cocktails. My preference in sweet vermouth is this Cokie di Torino. Excellent. It's an excellent, it's my go-to. What can I say? I'm gonna be honest about something here. I really don't like <laughs> I really don't like dry vermouth. It's just not my bag. A Dolan Dry, from everything that I gather, is an excellent choice. But for me, what I usually have down here in the bar is this uh, Martini and Rossi Reserve Special Ambrato. I got this. Oh, this is from Dale DeGroff. This is his go-to when he mixes a dry gin martini, and I prefer this much more than I do a basic dry vermouth. Now, last but not least, just a couple of mixers I think are, are really important when you're starting your home bar. You're going to need a triple sec of some sort. I brought out this Cointreau, but whatever triple sec you know, that you prefer would be just fine, but you're going to use this quite extensively. You're also going to need some form of a bitter aperitif. Of course, Campari is the most well-known. Yeah, it, it use that in all kinds of different cocktails. So that's something once your budget allows and your space allows, you can grow into that and you can add that. As far as whatever else I have down here at the bar, I have a ton of different liqueurs and mixers and Amaros. My best suggestion that I can give to you right now on that is as time goes by, look up several different uh, cocktail recipes you really want to try and boy that really sounds good but I need this one particular liqueur in order to make that cocktail. You go get that one liqueur and on and on you go. As time goes on you're going to collect one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, and twelve different liqueurs, mixers, and an Amaro and pretty soon you'll have a nice little 
a nice little grouping of, of uh, mixtures that you can use in all kinds of different cocktails. But just kind of add them one at a time as you see fit and as your budget allows and you're going to have lots of fun with it. I hope that was extremely helpful. I had a lot of fun. I tried to usher through that as fast as I could. Hey, have a great day. I appreciate each and every one of you. As always, we ask you to please drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time right down here with me in a good old basement bourbon bar. See you later.